There are many people in the world today who are not Christians, and so many of them are not interested in becoming Christians. But if you are a Christian today and you are watching this video, how did you become a Christian? If I were to be standing in front of you having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and I ask you this question, how would you answer? What will be your answer? I want you to think about that as you watch what I presented in this video. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Time of Transformation on Grace Tidings. And before I say anything, I want to make something quite clear. This video is about how to become a Christian. It's not about how to live the Christian life. There is a difference between the two. Becoming a Christian prepares you to live the Christian life, but you don't become a Christian because you live the Christian life. You live the Christian life because you are a Christian. Now that I get out of the way, so you won't confuse this discussion with living the Christian life. So let's get into how to become a Christian. So how did you become a Christian? I posted an article recently on Grace Tidings blog. I titled the article, Can We Determine Whether a Person is Saved or Not? I know many people will consider that question uh, too controversial or maybe it's irrelevant and they just quickly dismiss it. This is because they believe that uh, it is not possible for us as human or as human beings to determine whether a person is saved or not, or whether a person is truly saved or not. And that is true because salvation is not an outward thing, although it leads to some outward and noticeable effect on those who are saved. It is something that happens in the heart. It is a thing that happens on the inside and our inability to discern the heart of man makes it very, very difficult, if, if not impossible for us to determine on our own whether somebody is saved or not just by simply looking at them. But in that article, I suggested a way that we can determine whether a person is saved or not. And the way it works is by asking relevant questions. And based on the answers to those questions, we can determine whether their testimonies line up with the scriptures or not. And if it doesn't line up, then we have an opportunity to present the true gospel to them. Right? And this is a good way to start a conversation that will help people understand the gospel. And one of the questions is what I will be discussing in this video. One of the questions that I recommended in that article. And the question is, how did you become a Christian? And by the way, I strongly recommend that you go read that article after watching this video. It's titled, Can We Determine Whether a Person is Saved or Not? Now, before I proceed, I need you to do something for me. If you are a Christian and you are watching me now, I need you to pause this video and think about the question for a moment. How would you answer the question for yourself? How did you become a Christian? This discussion is not about judging other people's salvation or about talking them out of their salvation. It is a crucial discussion to have with people, especially now that many things in the world are becoming very superficial, including the profession of faith. So there are many people in the world today who are self-deceived. And there are also others who were made to believe that they are saved when they really are not. So how do we help such people to reevaluate their salvation if we don't have conversations like this, if we don't bring up issues like this? How can we help them? Because being lost is bad enough, but it's worse to think that you are saved when in fact you are still lost. We are told in Romans chapter 8 that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, bears witness in us that we are the children of God. So if you are a true child of God, the witness is in you and that will take care of all doubts. In John, 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5 in verse 13, the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know. It didn't say that ye may think or ye may assume or ye may hope. It said that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, 
Salvation is not a mystical thing. It's not something that happens outside of a person's mind. So that's another way of saying you cannot be saved and not know it. You can't be saved and not know you are saved. So you believe that you are saved because you are trusting in something. But the question is whether you are trusting in the right thing or not. Everybody is trusting in something. But you wouldn't know what they are trusting in until you ask them. Some people think that we shouldn't bother people about this topic. Why should you bother? Or why should you bother people about uh, how they became Christians, right? Uh, it's not my business. Uh, after all, salvation is between you and God, right? They so say, why should I force my belief on other people? Well, if you take that position, then you are not being obedient to the scriptures. Because God knows that everybody in the world, they are believing in something. But everybody in the world is not believing in the same thing. And God is not satisfied that everybody is believing in, on, in their own truth. God wants them to believe the truth. That's why we are commanded to preach the gospel. If you want to leave everybody to believe whatever they want to believe because salvation is between them and God, then why are we told to preach the gospel? That's because there's so many lies in the world that people are believing and we need to tell them the truth so that they can believe it and stop believing lies. So don't take the position that, oh, that's not my business. Anybody can believe what they believe is between them and God. That's not scripture. So how did you become a Christian? When you ask that question today, uh, this is where many people will begin to tell you the stories uh, about how they met a prophet and, and prayed for them and their miracles happened and then they joined his church, right? A pastor uh, told a story uh, about a young lady who claimed to be a Christian and the pastor asked the lady how she became a Christian. That's a very, very simple, straightforward question. How did you become a Christian? And this is the story of the, of the lady. She said she was having a marital problem. Um, her, her husband has already left home, no longer returning home, and her marriage was about to crumble. And then a friend recommended that she visit a prophet, which she did. And the prophet prayed for her a long story short. Her husband returned and apologized to her, and their marriage was restored. And then she joined the church of the prophet. Basically, that's how she became a Christian. That story is something that you hear from somebody who either doesn't have the right answer or doesn't understand the question, even though the question is a very simple one. How did you become a Christian? But for a person who is genuinely saved, there is no better answer to this question than the fact that you realized one day that you were lost. And there was nothing you could do to save yourself or redeem yourself. And then you repented and ran to Jesus for forgiveness. You trusted in Christ and what he did for you because of your sins. And now you are saved. Right? You don't become a Christian until you are saved. And to the lost people out there who are still posing to be Christians, the story of how they became Christian usually has nothing to do with getting saved. But without being saved, you cannot be a Christian. Regardless of your church membership, regardless of how many miracles have happened in your life, it doesn't matter because this is not about the restoration of your marriage. It's not about your medical condition. It's not about your job or your business. It's not even about the fruit of the womb that you receive after 15 years of marriage. Becoming a Christian is all about getting saved. And that's by believing in Jesus Christ, in Christ alone, because salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. If anybody gives you any answer that is different from that, then you got a great opportunity to share the gospel with that person so that they can believe right. What makes you a Christian is that your soul has been delivered and redeemed from hell. That's the fancy way of saying that your sins have been forgiven and you've been saved from the penalty of your sins. And this happened when you believed. Whatever you do for God after that is just the way you respond 
to your salvation. Those works, those good works, they don't get you saved. They couldn't get you saved and they cannot keep you saved. You were saved because you received the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not because of your self-righteousness. Right? You were saved because you trusted in the completed work of Christ on the cross. Not because of your own work of righteousness. Because we are told that our salvation is not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's what the Bible says. Titus chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. There is another question that I'll be discussing in future video. I want you to watch out for that. These questions are very relevant uh, to help people understand salvation and how to get saved. It's better to bother them and even hurt their feelings at times by telling them the truth than to let them feel good on their way to hell. If you find this video helpful, I encourage you to share with as many people as you can reach. There are a lot of people who can use information like this either for themselves or for other people that they know. So don't hesitate to share with them. And if you haven't subscribed to Grace Tidings YouTube channel, please do so. And don't forget the Grace Tidings blog. It's a very good place to go for life-changing lesson, teaching, Bible studies, articles that will open your eyes to the truth of the gospel. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you in Jesus' name.